Well, hello, folks out there in YouTube land. Got a big show lined up for you, and let's get right on into it. All right, let's pull up that screen. Oh, yeah, five-star you. We have really been hot in recruiting. It's been pretty fantastic. We've picked up what I believe are five five-stars uh, for three different years. And uh, one is actually a really high four-star, but I believe he's a five-star. That's Nico, Brew McCoy, Chandavian, Jonathan, and Cam Seldon. So five really uh, super strong uh, players. And on top of that, we've got some really high four stars as well that look fantastic. So Josh Heupel and the Vols have been on a heck of a run. And let's realize what Josh Heupel came into. Really a freaking disaster, okay? What Jeremy Pruitt left him was a bunch of players transferring. We lost both our starting linebackers who were really good, our starting running back who was really good, a whole crap load of other players, a five-star offensive lineman, et cetera, all transferred out. And he got left with what was really what we thought was gonna be a ragtag team. I don't know, something seems to be going on in the puddle. Yeah, it was not looking too good for Josh Heupel and the Vols. I was not feeling good about it at all. I wasn't even excited about the hire. I thought, well, you know, White's just brought in the guy that he had down there at uh, Central Florida and because uh, he couldn't find anybody else. Well, it turns out he knew exactly what he was doing because, man, I couldn't be happier with this hire. I really wouldn't take anybody over Josh Heupel, and that includes Nick Saban. And now hear, hear me out on this only because Nick Saban's going to retire at some point. I don't know how many years he's got left as far as uh, continuing to coach, you know, I guess as long as he wants to go. But Josh Heupel can coach for a really long time, and I love this offense. I think this offense allows us to compete against other teams that have a lot more talent than us, which you've got to do in the SEC right now because he's trying to rebuild this team. And he's going up against nothing but five stars in Georgia and Alabama. Well, what you've got to have is an offense that can score against any defense. And we saw last year exactly Tennessee doing that. They scored on Alabama, they scored on Georgia, and they scored a ton of points on everybody else, even though a lot of those teams had more talent than us and hadn't lost half their team to the transfer portal like we did. We didn't even know who our starting quarterback was going to be. I don't even think we knew who the damn water boy was going to be. So Josh had to get in there and really pump up the team and get them to play hard, which they did. Was it over when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? Hell no! Germans? Forget it, he's rolling. And of course they did. They won seven games. They really, they really won eight, nine if you count Ole Miss. So, you know, I was really pleased with them. And we wiped out two or three teams that have really been giving us trouble, like South Carolina, Missouri, and others. So, you know, just scoring up, up 28 to nothing or 28 to seven after the first quarter. I mean, when's the last time we did something like that? And we also had one big issue that was coming up, and that was the NCAA investigation. And we know they've come down with the allegations against uh, Jeremy Pruitt's regime, and it was a bunch, you know, level one uh, type stuff. But something very important says, despite the 18 level one violations, one of the highest total in recent years, said the university was not hit with lack of institutional control, largely because of its transparency and integrity in promptly handling the wrongdoing, NCAA documents say. The institution showed strong cooperation with the NCAA investigators, conducted its own thorough internal investigation, and took immediate steps in dismissing the staff members and sanctioning itself. The university docked itself 12 football scholarships, as well as imposing uh, several more recruiting penalties. And then they went so far as to say Tennessee's investigation, cooperation, and response led by White and his new staff should be the standard in such inquiries, NCAA documents say. And it's also very important to remember that the NCAA is not planning on doing anything to hurt players that had nothing to do with the, uh, with the infractions. So to avoid penalties that would affect players who were not at the school when the violations occurred with sanctions focused more specifically at those at fault, such as the coaches, which is exactly what happened. They all got fired. Yeah, I just think we may end up with a slap on the wrist, given how much cooperation that the uh, university showed and the NCAA's kind of bragging on them. So it may just be something like this. Four. <laughs> <laughs> now return to your seat. Can I tell you something before I go? What is it? I love you. <laughs> Yep, I think the NCAA and the university may have a formed a relationship. <laughs> and as you can see, Tennessee's nationally ranked seventh in recruiting, and only Clemson, Penn State, 
Texas, Georgia, Notre Dame, and Ohio State are ahead of them right now, and I believe they're number two in the SEC. Now, understand, Georgia and Alabama and Florida and all that, they're going to get real upset with this video. They already gave me grief over this last one, and that was this one about the Tennessee. Could they be building a new dynasty like back in the 90s? So you know this is going to set them off. But here's the deal. Why do you think they're so upset and getting so aggravated about this type of talk and then, and then these five stars committing to us? Why do you think they're so upset? Think that through for a minute. Because they know this offense can score on their defense and that we are a threat. And all we need are some big time game changers like a Nico, like a Chandavian, a Brew McCoy, or a Cam Seldon. And there are others, some high four stars we've got coming in that could be real game changers too. And then in 2024, we've already got the five star in Jonathan Eccles, who is another game changer. Here's the reality. If we get a bunch of uh, guys in there that can hang easily with Georgia and Alabama, with our offense, the way uh, Josh Heupel runs it, they're in danger of losing to us. That's why they get upset, and that's why they troll this type of video, because they can see the momentum we've got going on. They know we've got the NIL money. They know the fan base we've got. We've got the history and the name, and we got the coach. They're concerned and worried. That's the issue. They can sit there and troll all they want, they're worried, and they should be. Because as Josh Heupel keeps bringing in these big dogs, all of a sudden, they're not going to be kicking sand in our face anymore, and we're going to come at them like this. Well, I didn't think you had it in you. I'm your huckleberry. Why, Johnny Ringo, you look like somebody just walked over your grave. That's right. It's going to get a little tougher for them. We're not going to just lay over anymore. They got problems. And if you like this content, be sure to hit that like button. Uh, lets me know to continue to cover the Vols. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button because I don't have a lot of subscribers. I just started this a few weeks ago, and I need some subscribers. Anyway, I hope you did like the content, and we'll see you next time on Sports Talk Jag.